Christianity without power is confrontality with drama. You wake up under a mask on your body, you lack power. That, see, this thing is not about the man with the man with an evidence is not at the mercy with the man with an argument. The man with an evidence is not at the mercy of the man merely with an argument. You can, for example, something like miracle money now, you can't tell OFM that miracle money is not real. No, you can't tell us because we are not arguing. We, are, we have evidence. The man with an evidence is not at the mercy of the man merely an argument. You are just talking, talking. These days you go to churches, talk, no power. Talk, 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 talk. Christians, talk, talk, no power. Talk. A pastor without power is a lecturer without knowing. Lecture. Point one, point two. No power. There are young Christians today. Many of you think you need to climb the pulpit to manifest. Even in the banking world. They say you can enter the banking world and you become the favorite of even the customers. People start coming to you to bless you. There's a banker in, that, in OFM that a customer gave a car. She said, I like the way you attend to me. They gave a car. That, that is power. Power is ability, capacity, dynamism, sagacity, temerity. In that scripture, Peter defined. And thank God it was Peter who was speaking. Peter was the authority of the church. He said, the definition of this thing I'm introducing to you, sir, is how God anointed Jesus. I know him. I work with him. He went with the Holy Ghost and power. He went with the Holy Ghost. Get ready. Because the Holy Ghost and power is coming upon you. I can't hear you. I say it's coming upon you. Hey, man. Have you have, can you imagine Jesus lying there in the hospital? They admitted him and Peter went to buy pap. Power. Demonic oppression, no power. Poverty, no power. When this power comes, it brings wealth. One day Jesus said, when shall we buy bread? Not when shall we borrow bread. When shall we buy bread? The, the money is available. It's the commodity we are looking for. When shall we buy bread? Not when shall we beg money to buy. The money is on ground. Those of you that thought he was poor. And even that abundance that Jesus had in his day, Compared to what we should have, God called that poverty. I wish I could explain. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus. He said, though he was rich, your sake, he became poor. Jesus had a treasurer. No poor man has a treasurer. Jesus had a treasurer, which was Judas. And the Bible called that poverty. Jesus said, when shall we buy bread? There is money. There's money. We are lo looking for, when can we have money? This we have 5,000 men. Jesus said, when shall we have, buy bread for these men? That is a man speaking from the depth of abundance. So you, you are seeing 5,000 men. You are seeing the number. You are still attempting to buy. It's because you are sure of your account. When the Archbishop came, one of the anger people had, in 1986, 87, 89 to 92, one of the anger people had against him, the house I was, why will he say God is not a poor God? And I was confused. Why, why do you like po poverty? That was the anger, that, was the, that word made people angry. Why will he the house I say God is not a poor God? Is God a poor God? The earth is the Lord. The fullness. Why will he say God is not a poor God? No, he should not say that. Anytime the devil wants to keep a man permanently bound with poverty, it makes him hate the message of prosperity. Because what the first key to wealth is a change of mindset. When you start thinking the possibility of wealth, wealth is coming. Because wealth, oh, wealth is a spirit. Money is an angel. It checks the mind, the state of mind. Are you following what I'm talking about? It's very serene and sensitive. Is serene, no, no, is serene. I told you, money hates noise. That is why they don't play music in the bank. Money.